Psalm 103, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Can I say the Bible said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Can I say the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Can I say one more time? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Father, we do bless your holy name. Father, words fail us uh, to exalt you uh, and to uh, proclaim you uh, and to thank you uh, for all you've done uh, in the days leading up to today. Uh, God, I bless you uh, for saving those five precious souls. Uh, God, I bless you for showing up every night uh, and manifesting your presence. Uh, God, I bless you for breaking hearts. Uh, I bless you for reviving the saints. Uh, God, I bless bless you for what I feel in my soul. Uh, God, I bless you for the good singing. Uh, God, I bless you for the Word of God. Uh, God, I bless you for a good church we can come to. Uh, God, I just bless your holy name. Uh, Father, I'm uh, reminded uh, this morning, uh, Lord, you've been so good this past week, uh, but Lord, you told Moses that you're the I am uh, that I am. Uh, Lord, you were not only good this past week. Uh, God, you're the God of the present. Uh, you're good today. Uh, and we bless you. Uh, and we praise you. Uh, and we thank you. Uh, there's still a remnant uh, that wants to meet with you. Uh, that hungers for you. Uh, that wants to see you do something for folks. Uh, and revive a community. Uh, and revive a nation. Uh, God, I bless your holy name. Uh, now, Father, help us uh, manifest yourself uh, save the lost uh, revive the saints that aren't revived uh, continue to break hearts uh, and glorify your name we'll thank you for it uh, for it's in the wonderful and the holy uh, and the blessed worthy name of Jesus we do pray uh, amen uh, Amen. In these verses, uh, I find some things that excite me. Uh, you say, preacher, why are you so excited? Because uh, I was once lost on my way to hell. Uh, but blessed be the name of Jesus. Uh, there's nothing greater than grace. Uh, he came to where I was. Uh, hey, and I got in him and he got in me. Uh, and I bless the Lord. Uh, hey, you say, I don't like all that excitement. You don't want to go to heaven then, friend. Uh, oh, because it's going to be blessed the Lord in heaven I promise you uh, but I want you to notice a couple things uh, I want you to notice first of all the believers obligation it is the obligation of everyone uh, that has tasted the grace of God. Uh, everyone that's been birthed into the family of God. Uh, everyone that's had their sins washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is our obligation uh, to fulfill verse number one. Uh, it said, Bless the Lord, O uh, my soul, uh, and all that is within me. Uh, Bless his holy name. Uh, uh, the psalmist said, God has been so good to me uh, that not only with my lips, uh, not only from my heart, uh, but in the very gable end of my soul, uh, all that is within me, uh, I am obligated uh, uh, to lift my hands toward heaven uh, and say, Blessed be uh, the name of the Lord. Uh, oh, we see our obligation. Some of y'all are past due uh, on doing what you're obligated to do. Mm. Now, some of you showed up today out of a sense of obligation. 
what a blessing you're here. But can I say, if all you do is show up, you're falling way behind. You're not just obligated to show up. The Bible says not forsaking the assembling ourselves together. But you are obligated uh, as being a citizen of God's holy land uh, by being saved by the grace of God uh, to bless His holy name. We see our obligation. I want you to notice our opportunity. Look what's in verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I not only got to come, but I get the opportunity to bless Him. He blesses me all the time. Choir sang that. We're so blessed. We're blessed to live in the greatest land on the, on the face of the earth. Uh, she's not perfect, but she's still the best there is. Uh, hey, we're blessed to breathe God, God's air. Uh, we're blessed uh, to live in nice homes, have nice clothes, drive nice cars, uh, live in a nice community. Uh, hey, we're blessed to have food on our table uh, and some still in the cupboard. Uh, hey, we're blessed. We're blessed to have good families, uh, have a good church. Uh, we're blessed to have the Bible. Uh, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. Uh, hey, but it's about time we start blessing him. Uh, blessing him, uh, blessing him. Uh, hey, uh, we get to bless the Lord. What an opportunity. We see our obligation. We see our opportunity. But notice the object objective for believers. It said in verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And here's the objective and forget not all his benefits. You know why some of you drug in here this morning? You've forgotten his benefits. Amen. You know why some of you haven't blessed the Lord so long you don't, know, don't even remember when you blessed him? Because you've forgotten all his benefits. Huh? You know why some of you are too embarrassed to throw up a hand and go, Woo! You've forgotten all his benefits. Yeah. You know why some of you couldn't find the altar if you had a GPS? because you've forgotten all his benefits. You know why some of you can't go out in the community and invite somebody to church? Probably because you wouldn't be here if they came because you've forgotten all his benefits. You know why some of you couldn't take somebody through the Bible and show them how to get saved? You've forgotten all his benefits. Uh, 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 I'm glad you're here. Uh, but are you blessing the Lord uh, with your lips, uh, with your life, uh, with your lifestyle? Uh, hey, uh, we're obligated to. We have the opportunity to, but the objective is not to forget all his benefits. Brother Bob, I got to thinking about his benefits. Uh, 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 how about the benefit of his touch? Uh, you know what was so sweet around here this week? Uh, he just touched us. Uh, hey, uh, hey, what a blessing, Brother Phil. Uh, he just come by and touched us this week. Uh, hey, uh, Miss Norris. Maureen, he really touched you Friday night. Uh, you went to the glory world for a little while. Uh, hey, uh, what a blessing, Brother Clint. Back in that Sunday school class a few weeks ago, he walked in there and touched y'all. Uh, hey, you that were saved uh, starting last week, uh, but he come by and touched you, and you got born again. Uh, hey, that's a benefit. He didn't have to touch us. Uh, he didn't have to come by our way. Uh, he didn't have to bless us. Uh, hey, it's a benefit when God just chooses uh, not only to save you uh, but he chooses to come by every now and then uh, and just touch you. Uh, Miss Brandy used tore up last week uh, but he touched you and gave you peace. Uh, I'm telling you what a benefit uh, that the holy God of glory uh, walked through this place uh, and just touched us. Uh, hallelujah. How about Brother Bobby that night got up to preach and all he could do was squall. Uh, I'm glad when God touches us uh, and he does something for us, uh, I say hallelujah to God uh, that he'd come by and touch us every now and then uh, just to remind us he knows and he's about us. Uh, whoa, uh, I talk about the benefit of his treasures. You see, God's treasures are a whole lot more meaningful than this world's treasures. His world's treasures are rust uh, and wear out. Uh, and become useless. Huh? 
but his treasures are eternal. Huh? I got to think of Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Uh, what a treasure to have love in your heart, not hatred. Uh, joy. Uh, I'm glad I can rejoice because uh, I got some joy. Uh, unspeakable. Uh, full of glory. Uh, hey, his treasure of peace. Uh, what a blessing to have a peace in my heart uh, knowing it doesn't matter what happens in this world. Uh, God's still on the throne uh, and he's still in control. Uh, hey, how about the treasure of long suffering? Uh, I'm glad he's long suffering to us. Word, uh, not willing that any should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, I'm glad he suffers long. Uh, hey, I got news for you. Uh, there's some days I'm not what I should be. Uh, there's some days I uh, uh, stumble and fall, uh, but he doesn't give up on me. Uh, he's long suffering. Uh, he just keeps putting up with me. What a treasure from God. Uh, hey, how about gentleness? Uh, how about goodness? Uh, how about faith? Uh, how about meekness? Uh, how about temperance? Uh, all treasures from God. Uh, Amen. See, our objective is not to forget that. Uh, boy, Brother J.D. preached Wednesday night on some memories worth remembering. Yeah. You know what the problem is, Miss Noreen? Some people forgot what garbage dump God found them in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of you forget what it's like smelling like garbage and now you're robed in his freshness mm. uh, I got to thinking about the treasure of his timing uh, you know he's never late he's always right on time got to think of that song Miss Lynn sang the other night about the potter and he puts us on the wheel and we're going through that hardship and that turmoil. Uh, and we're going through problems. Uh, we're thinking, God, isn't it about time? Uh, but he just keeps working. Did you ever think about that potter and the clay? Uh, first of all, the potter's got to extract the clay from the earth. Uh, uh, see, we were of the earth. Uh, we were made of the dust of the ground. Uh, uh, we were fleshly. Uh, 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 we were conceived in iniquity. Uh, in sin, our mother brought us forth. Uh, uh, we were born in sin. Uh, we like sin. Uh, we were sinners. Uh, uh, sin is all we knew uh, we we're, were in enmity with God uh, but God came our way uh, and he reached down uh, way down from glory uh, some of you had to reach to the lowest pit uh, and he pulled you up uh, he had to extract us uh, from the earth uh, and then uh, he put us on the wheel uh, hey uh, uh, when he puts us on the wheel uh, he put a little water in hallelujah for the washing of the water of the word of God uh, hallelujah for the water of the Holy Ghost uh, and he put a little water in uh, then he put his hands on us uh, and he began to mold us uh, began to shape us uh, began to fashion us uh, then we get a little dry uh, and a potter takes a little oil uh, puts a little oil in the clay uh, oil another picture of the Holy Ghost uh, hey last week we had a little oil Oil running through here uh, and he begins to work that clay uh, and again he's got his hands on us uh, and he fashions us uh, sometimes uh, he puts his hands on us brother Clint through a test uh, sometimes through a trial uh, sometimes brother Tommy through hardship uh, and he's got his hands on us uh, and he's working in our lives uh, and he's getting us ready uh, and we're thinking it at about time uh, but he still works with us uh, brother Eddie just keeps his hand on you uh, Brother Bobby just keeps on working on you. Uh, he don't throw the clay away. Uh, he might see a little spot that needs a little help. Uh, and he put a little more clay in there, work on it. Uh, put his hands on it. Uh, hey, uh, but when that thing's ready, Brother Phil, uh, he takes it off uh, and he puts it in the fire. Uh, whoa, we don't like going through the fire. Uh, but oh, it's in the fire. Uh, beauty comes out. Uh, Job says, when I'm tried, uh, I'll come forth as gold. Uh, and when it comes out of the furnace, uh, hallelujah, it's a beautiful vessel. Uh, and then he puts his name on it. Uh, hey, this past week, uh, he put his name on some of you. Uh, he say he put his hands on some of you. Then he put his name on you. Uh, aren't you glad for the benefit of his timing? Uh, he's always right on time. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I wish I'd bless the Lord. Uh, Oh, my soul. I want to preach for a minute on bless the Lord. We just need a blessing. 
He's been blessing us. We need to bless him. That word bless in the context of our text means to adore God for his goodness and to return thanks. Some of you didn't get that. To bless the Lord means to adore God. Do you know what mean what the word adore means? That means you become so infatuated with Him you don't see anybody else. Hmm? Uh, some of you adore sports people. Some of you adore Hollywood people. Some of you adore other things and other people. It says to bless the Lord. You've got to adore God. Why? For His goodness. Do you know that He's great and greatly to be praised? And it means to return thanks. Ah. Uh, you want to have true revival? You get the spirit of thanksgiving in your soul. You start blessing the Lord. See, He inhabits the praise of His people. And when you get to blessing Him, He just sits down and hangs around for a while. Mm. Can I say we should bless the Lord for His redemption? Look with me in verse number 4. The Bible says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Now, I don't know if you realize it or not, but before he found you, your life uh, was headed for destruction. You was going to live a destructive life in this life, uh, then you was going to die and go to hell uh, and pray for your sins for all of eternity. Uh, we ought to bless the Lord. Uh, hey, that he redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Uh, hey, I once was lost on my way to hell. Uh, I'm glad he knew where I was. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, he'd already went to Calvary, shed his blood for me. Uh, I died and was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, and he uh, 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 sent his church in action. Uh, hey, uh, and 2,000 years later, uh, a little 10 year old boy sitting in the Athen Baptist Church uh, heard his granddaddy preaching about Jesus uh, that Jesus would save him uh, that night hallelujah uh, my destructive life got turned all the way around uh, I got born again uh, he redeemed me uh, he bought me back off the oxen block of sin uh, he saved my never dying soul uh, my life's not going to end in destruction. Uh, it's going to end in bliss and glory. Uh, hallelujah. Because of what he did. Uh, we ought to bless the Lord that he saved us. Uh, if he never does anything else. Uh, I said blessed be the Lord. Uh, oh my soul. Uh, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord. Uh, ain't nothing like it when he saves you. Uh, uh, hey Shoeless. Joe, do you like getting saved? Huh? The blessing, boy, seeing you get born again. Where's Caleb? You glad you got saved, boy? Nothing like it, is it? We ought to bless the Lord that He saved us. Uh, you know why some of you can't get excited about when you got saved? You might never got saved. I'm just telling you. It happened to me almost 47 years ago. I hadn't got over it. Huh? You say, preacher, would I act like you? You may act worse. I don't know. Look at Phil. Oh, I want to tell you something. When he saves you, he changes your life. Huh? Listen, I don't know your heart. I know there are folks who get providentially hindered. I know there are a lot of reasons. But I just want to tell you something. If what I had couldn't get me to revival meeting or get me back to church every now and then on a Sunday night or Wednesday night, and it couldn't get me to tell somebody about Jesus, sure. I'd be checking up because I don't know that you got salvation. Hmm? Sure. Uh, that little boy there got saved on Monday night and the next day he's telling the pastor of First Church of Christ about Jesus. Uh, when you get saved, something happens to you and you want everybody to be saved. Hmm? What a blessing for redemption. Uh, you say, preacher, I'm saved. I wish you'd tell your face because your face don't look like you're saved. Your face looks like you're miserable or on your way to hell is what your face looks like. Uh, Jesus saved me. He changed me. I'm happy, 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 happy. I'm saved. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait to come to church and just bless the Lord. Huh? 
By the way, if you don't bless him in your house, you ain't going to bless him when you get to the house of God. We ought to bless the Lord for redemption. Can I say this? We ought to bless the Lord for restoring. Look in verse 3. Verse number 3 says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. I'm glad Big Doug, he didn't say forgive some of our iniquities. He said all of them. All of them. Now you've got to understand, iniquity is not sin. Oh, it's an element of sin, but it's not sin. You see, God, he, He's almighty. He knows the difference between the word sin and the word iniquities. Right. If He meant sin, He'd wrote sin. Yes, sir. He said iniquity. Yes, sir. Iniquity means unequal dealing with God. Yes, it means when something else or someone else or anything else gets more of your attention than God, then you have iniquity in your life. Right. You know why we have to, need to have revival meetings? Because we live in this wicked world. And life happens. And there's a lot of things that happen in life, Brother Bob. You get sick. You get busy. You mow your grass. You get ragweed. Huh? You got kids and grandkids, and they got school, and they got uh, all their life and all their activities. Uh, you got to go to the grocery store, and when you go to the grocery store, uh, uh, you might hear somebody speak a bunch of foul stuff. You might go through the line, and there's uh, magazines with half-naked people on it. Let me just stop right there. When Jesus saved that madman of Gadara, he was naked in the tombs, and when he saved him, Brother Brian, they found that man clothed and in his right mind. People run around half naked aren't right with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Phil. I'm going to say that again. People run around half naked aren't right with God. Amen, Pastor. When folks get saved, they cover up. Sure. And by the way, can I say something else? I don't know why I'm on this, but I'm on it and I'm going to run with it. All right? Hey, when God saves you, He cleans you up, He gives you a reverence in your soul. And part of that is, the Bible teaches we're to be modest in our apparel. You know what the book says? Huh? Be dressed in modesty. When you come to the house of God, you ought to look your best. Because Jesus gave him his best, or the Lord gave his best for you in giving Jesus. Now, can I say? If all your attire brings attention to you, it's ungodly. Let me say that again. If all your attire does is bring attention to you, it's ungodly. Uh, ladies, I don't need to see your figure. It's none of my business. Now, I've said this before. Hey, if it's not for sale, you don't advertise it. Thank you, Brother James. Uh, Bless God, you ought to cover yourself up, but the last place you ought to see cracks and crevices is ought to be the house of God. You ought to look modest. You ought to have a holy glow about you. So when you come to the house of God, you can bless the Lord. But you see, too many times we let the world dictate to us uh, how we're to live and how we're to act and how we're to dress and how we're to speak, uh, and we just get worldly. But bless the Lord. He forgiveth all of our iniquities. Uh, he restores us. The reason we have revival meeting uh, is to get us back to where we should have been. Uh, and He restores us. Uh, and He forgives us. Uh, and He cleans us up. Uh, and He dresses us up. Uh, and He makes us fit to be able to bless Him. Uh, and if that kind of preaching makes you mad, the altar's open. We ought to bless Him for redemption. We ought to bless Him for restoring. We ought to bless Him for recovering. Look in verse 3 again. Well, verse 3 says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Can I say the greatest disease He heals is our sin disease. With His stripes we are healed. Hmm? But I'm glad He recovers us from a lot of sickness and a lot of disease. Huh? I appreciate Miss Annette a few weeks ago standing up and testifying. Nobody in our church got COVID. Isn't that a, isn't that a blessing? Uh, now somebody might get it today. I don't know. But I'm telling you, when you put first, put God first and you seek Him first, God will take care of you. 
But even if you get sick, he's the great physician. He's able to recover you out of all your diseases. Huh? I'm glad some's recovered. There have been some who have been sick of other things. we got folks in here that had cancer, don't have cancer anymore. We have folks in here that had other things. They don't have them anymore. Why? Because uh, the Lord, the Lord is good. We ought to bless His holy name. I thought about this. We ought to bless Him for His reward. And some of you done checked out when I got on all that stuff. You might as well go ahead and leave. It ain't going to get no better for you. And you sure don't want to be here next week when big Superman gets around stomping on Bless God. Uh, hey. We need to be honest with him. We don't bless him like we should. Hmm. What a blessing for his rewarding. Look at verse number 4. He said, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Here it is. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. <laughs> you say, how does he reward you? By showing us loving kindness and tender mercies. Huh? Uh, Brother Aaron, he just don't give us mercy. He gives us tender mercy. Because our egos are fragile, our hearts are fragile, our lives are fragile. So just like when they was crucifying him, they was beating him in the hall praetorium, and they gave him that dried out reed that should have crumbled in his hand, it didn't crumble in his hand. And can I say, your life won't crumble in his hand either. He has tender mercy. He has loving kindness. He just doesn't show us kindness. He shows us kindness with compassion dumped on it. He shows us loving kindness. Uh, Brother Brian, uh, how kind has he been to us? How loving kindness has he showed us? Uh, he showed you loving kindness when you was a wicked sinner. Uh, right. hey, amen. What a God he is. He's worthy for us to bless his soul. huh? Brother Peter, he saved your darling little girl about a month ago. He didn't have to do that. What a loving Savior he is, huh? Well, to bless the Lord for his rewarding, huh? People think of rewards. They think about crowns and harps and robes. Huh? I'm just thankful for love and kindness and tender mercy, aren't you? Amen. To bless the Lord for revival. Look in verse 5. Who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle's. Uh, did he not renew us a little bit this week? Did he not satisfy us a little bit this week? Uh, I, I think about, I can't even wrap my head around all that he done, but I think about what he done this week, and I think, bless the Lord. Uh, oh, uh, he's good. Uh, he was good to us this week. Uh, he satisfied us. Uh, he renewed us this week. Uh, hey, I feel like running another mile. Uh, I feel like shouting out uh, why God's been good to us. Uh, we ought to bless the Lord. Uh, then I thought about this. We ought to bless the Lord for his reputation. Amen. Look at verse number 8. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, Brother James. There's nothing greater than grace. He's merciful and gracious. Hallelujah, he's slow to anger. I'm glad he ain't like me. Uh, uh, Y'all remember Looney Tunes? Kids Google it. They don't show you good stuff anymore. Y'all remember that coyote and that roadrunner? Uh, that coyote would see that roadrunner coming and he'd put dynamite in the way and he'd have this real long, he'd roll out this real long wick and he'd light it. By the time that roadrunner got there, that, that thing never went off. But as soon as the coyote showed up, boom! Huh. Man, the devil plants traps for us and everything. But the Lord's got a long wick. Uh, are you listening? He's slow to anger. I mean, the devil goes before the throne of God and accuses that sorry Donald. You saved him and look at him. He didn't even get his wife any breakfast for church this morning. She's over there, her stomach's ground. She's starving to death. That sorry, no good, Donald. And God just looks at you in pity and love. I promise you, you'll feed her next Sunday, won't you? Amen. Yeah. And Sunday school couldn't even teach, man. She sounded like an earthquake going off over there in her stomach, man. I told him Dunkin' Donuts is open, brother. Go get her a donut. 
God's slow to anger. Uh, hey, the devil's got a lot of material to accuse us. But he's gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger. And then just like the old coyote, about the time the devil thinks he's got us, God blows it up in his face. Isn't that a blessing? Uh, uh, look what it says. I'm talking about God's reputation. He's slow to anger. He's plenteous in mercy. I'm glad he never run out of mercy. I need it every day. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. Look here. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Aren't you glad for that? Uh, hey, I'm talking about since Friday night, we've all failed the grace of God. But we come in here today, and he's, he's ready to meet with us. Uh, he don't deal with us according to our sins, uh, nor rewardeth us according to our iniquity. Aren't you glad he rewards us with tender mercy, loving kindness? Don't give us what we deserve, huh? It says, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Uh, like as a father pitieth his children, uh, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Uh, for he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Oh, what a Savior. You get to reading about his reputation and you can't help if you know him. Just look back toward heaven and say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, bless the Lord. Forget not all his benefits. I wonder this morning, have you forgotten how good God's been to you? I wonder this morning, have you just been going through the motions you come because you're obligated? Or you come because of the opportunity for you get to bless the Lord. I wonder this morning, I had a whole week worth of meeting. Are you still not revived? You can't be. Maybe you're here today and God's been speaking to you and you know you're not saved. But you know you need to get saved. Let me tell you one more time, Jesus loves you. And it's His will that none should perish but that all should come to repentance. He came seeking to save that which was lost. And the Bible said, For whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. Because I promise you, Jesus wants you to be saved. He died for you. And He wants to save you. Amen. And you can be saved today. Christian, He loves you. He misses your fellowship. He wants you to be revived. He wants you to be revived. He heralds when you bless His name. And shame on us for not blessing his name more. Amen. When was the last time you really blessed the Lord? God help us to bless him with our lips, our lives, our heart, our soul. Because my dear friends, that's what he redeemed. And God help us to show gratitude for his salvation. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, you come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. Come. You got mad at the preacher, you need to come get right with God. You got aught in your brother well, against the brother, you ought to come get right with God. If you're cold and indifferent, you ought to come get right with God. If you haven't prayed for sinners, you ought to come get right with God. If you haven't blessed the Lord, you ought to come get right with God. Say, preacher, I can get right in my pew. Not really. Pride keeps you in your pew. You want to get right with God, you've got to admit to God you need to get right, and a lot of that is coming to the altar. Maybe you need to come get right with God. Maybe God's just speaking your heart. Maybe you just need to go to somebody and say, I just want to tell you I love you. God put you in my life and you're one of the treasures he put in my life. I don't know. Maybe you need to go to somebody and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I've talked about you like a dog. I'm sorry. I don't know. You need to mind God. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless your name. Lord, we in a million lifetimes couldn't bless you enough. Now, Father, have your way in this invitation. Folks are already in the altar. Speak their hearts. Help them. Comfort them. Bless them, God, so they can bless you. God, I pray for somebody here today unsaved. God, you'd convict them through cords of love. They'd come, get redeemed. God, there may be somebody here today. Lord, it's just not revived yet. Lord, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost go sit in their lap till they get revived. God, I pray you just have your will in this invitation. 
Help folks to mind you and be obedient. That's what we did all week long, and you blessed. Help them not to quit now. Well, thank you for what you do, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.